Hello and good morning. Thank you for participating in today's webinar. My name is Olivia Link and I'm a system sales manager for phase one industrial. And we have Mark Abbott, Trimble application support engineer doing a demonstration on the info photogrammetry software suite. Uh, if you'd like to listen to today's recording, please go to industrial.phase1.com, scroll to the bottom of the page and you can access the webinar library there. Uh, without further ado, I'll hand over the mic to Mark and he can get started on his demonstration. Here you go, Mike. Mark. Thank you, Olivia. And uh, welcome everybody. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone. My name is Mark Abbott and uh, I am an application support engineer with the Trimble Geospatial Group. Just a little brief blurb about myself. Uh, I've been with Trimble since uh, 2014 and uh, I am part of the info uh, technical and training support group uh, as well as the, the land mobile mapping group. Uh, and uh, there was a time uh, I was also involved with the Trimble aerial system. So I've kind of touched many groups uh, at the same time in Trimble. Uh, prior to coming to Trimble, I was on the Microsoft Bing Maps team and uh, also did some time at Intergraph, uh, also doing technical support for the, uh, the photogrammetry software. So that's a little bit about me. And what I am here to do today is I'm gonna show you a little bit about the Trimble info photogrammetry software and um, just to kind of highlight some of the, the features. Now, when we refer to Trimble Info Photogrammetry software, we're really referring to a software that contains many different modules. Uh, we have the, the Match AT software, which is the aerial triangulation package. The Match T and Match 3DX is the surface generation package where you can generate uh, anything from a classic DTM to a dense colorized point cloud. DT Master is our editor. Um, it has a full suite of editing tools in a 3D environment. And then once you have uh, your surface and your aerial triangulation done, it's time to go into the Ortho Master and the Ortho Vista software. And the Ortho Master software is where we perform the ortho rectification on the individual photos. And then the Ortho Vista software is where those photos are then mosaic together and tone balanced to form a uniform single ortho. Speaking a little bit about the Info Match AT software, um, it is a, as I mentioned, it is a, what is colloquially refused to, uh, re referred to as an aerial triangulation package or georeferencing. It can support many different camera heads. We do, the, of course, the traditional nadir and oblique, uh, single head and multi-head, and we can also accept uh, satellite scenes from certain satellites uh, into our projects. It's fully automatic. The tie point extraction and camera calibration capabilities are, are automatic and hands-off, and the software does allow you to do direct geo-referencing as well as the full sensor calibration. Typically in the workflow in the uh, Trimble Info Photogrammetry software after Match AT, um, it's time to generate a surface. And uh, we have a product called Match T, which allows you to create point clouds from image matching techniques. It's fairly quick and it can be a, a good cost-effective alternative to uh, active LIDAR system. Match T allows you to produce a classic DTM model as well as a classic point cloud. And if you choose the point cloud option in Match AT, your point cloud will also be colorized with the RGB values of the imagery. There is an additional product now that is available, uh, Match 3DX. Um, it was introduced, I believe, in version nine, and it allows um, a dense point cloud generation using the semi-global matching technique. The primary benefit of this is this allows you to generate a true ortho uh, directly from the dense point cloud. It also has the capabilities of producing meshes. Um, for uh, those of you who understand what those are, that'll allow you to do the 3D modeling. And once your surface is generated, whichever one that you selected, um, 
it is then time to go into uh, DT Master, which is our surface and terrain modeling package. We have a wide range of uh, features that are available in DT Master. Um, with the addition of a product called Scope Plus Plus, it is a point, cl uh, point cloud classifier. Um, it also allows you to extract information, uh, generate mapping grade contours, calculate volumes, and as I mentioned earlier, it has a, a full suite of basic CAD and GIS mapping tools that allow you to uh, do editing and viewing in a stereoscopic 3D environment. Once the surface is prepared, then the next step is the Info OrthoMaster and OrthoVista software. The OrthoMaster software allows you to create a classic or true ortho. And once those images are mosaiced in the OrthoVista software, we have automatic color adjustments, automatic seam line generation that will um, produce a final ortho that is really homogenous in quality. Um, there is also an interactive seam line editor if you choose to uh, alter the way the seam lines uh, proceed through the project, that is also available. And then finally, uh, we have a package uh, that is specifically tailored to UAV systems uh, entitled UAS Master. And this software is optimized for the UAV systems. And it provides this entire um, Trimble info photogrammetry workflow into a single uh, software package. And with each step of the process from the aerial triangulation, surface generation, edit, and the ortho, the steps are simplified and they're, um, they're streamlined and simplified so that it allows um, professionals with the UAV who may not have an extensive mapping or photogrammetry knowledge background, uh, they could still achieve the same results as, um, as, as others um, in other software packages. So, and at any time, um, you can go to our download center, the Trimble Download Center. That download center is uh, located at www.imaging-download.com. And there is an info evaluation license form that you can download, fill out, and return to us and to apply for a 30-day trial license for the uh, Trimble Photogrammetry. So if you are interested in having a look at the software, uh, trial licenses are available from our download site. Okay, and um, thankfully that's just the end of the slides right there. So what I'm gonna do uh, now is I will just have, um, I will just do sort of a live demo using a phase one project in the info software. And beginning with the info software, um, the first product that is launched is called Applications Master. Applications Master is the module of the info software that primarily handles the creation of a project and the editing of a project. Um, later we'll see that it will also uh, kick off the other modules such as the Match AT, the Match 3DX, and the Ortho Master. And so it's best to think of Applications Master as kind of the one ring that rules them all. And when you start the Application Master software, the first choice that you're presented with is a project type. And I believe a majority of users are uh, still using the aerial uh, mapping cameras. And so the aerial sensor, either a, a traditional frame camera, a film camera, or a digital is, is probably the most common choice. But as you can see, there are also some other formats that we can support. We su support certain satellite sensors, certain push broom sensors, and uh, we also have the ability to create a multi-head project if you have an oblique uh, project. When you enter Applications Master after selecting your project type, you are presented with a dialog called the Project Editor. And typically the first thing that you do in this project editor is you define your coordinate system, your output coordinate system for your data. And in this case, I've selected the uh, UTM zone 13 North. And then you sort of systematically work through this dialogue going through top to bottom, defining all of the parameters of your project. So after you define your coordinate system, 
the next step would be to define the camera. And there are several different ways that you can handle the camera in the software. Um, the first way is you can enter all of the parameters manually. So you will typically have a camera calibration report from the camera manufacturer. And you would just simply enter the parameters from that document uh, directly into the dialog uh, concerning focal length, pixel size, and if there is any distortion information that is available. It's also possible to import these camera parameters from a previously com completed project. And this is the icon here with the green arrow. And we also provide a camera database with the software that has some common uh, camera systems. And so it is possible to pull from this camera database, uh, saving you from having to type all of the parameters in. And then ultimately, whenever you have your camera uh, created, if, if you entered it manually or if you imported it from a previous project, you can certainly write that camera to a database. And so that'll allow you to choose that camera from the database uh, in, in your future project. Once your camera is defined in the project, and then the next step is to typically import the images within the project. That is done by the frame type in the project editor. You'll go to import image files and then you will select the directory containing the images and then you will just follow a wizard that will ask you uh, some questions you will be asked about an average terrain height for the project and then once your images are imported into the project the next step is to import the gnss or imu um, here in North America we tend to call that the uh, airborne gps or it's also called the initial eo and so when we double click on the GNSS IMU of the project, it also brings up an importer. And I would go to the import, uh, select my file. I typically have this in a folder called input. And then I just go through this importer where it asks me to define columns. How is it delimited? Uh, it will ask me what coordinate system that this data can be in. Um, it can be in a different coordinate system uh, from my project, though that's not uh, typical. And then once all of the airborne GPS is imported into the project, there is an initialization which then links these EO values that I just imported with the photos that were imported in the previous step. So you can see my list of photos here. I have an easting, a northing, and a height, as well as an omega phi kappa for each photo. Once the image is in and the EO is in, then uh, typically the next step is to import ground control points. And just like importing the EO, it is also uh, performed by selecting the import button and then simply browsing to a file. Again, you choose, you have to tell the system how is your uh, file delimited? Is it comma? Is it blank? And then it asks you to define columns. Later in the import process, the wizard here, you will also be asked to uh, confirm the coordinate system. And again, it is uh, perfectly okay to have the ground control points in a different coordinate system than your project. It's no problem. We will translate that on the fly, though it's lately it hasn't been very com uh, common. And then finally, um, after you have imported your ground control points, it's time to create the strips of the project. And by double clicking on strips under grouping, I have an automatic strip generation that will um, look at the orientation of the flight lines and then it will attempt to create strips based on the flight lines. So if I move the project editor out of the way, as you can see, just taking the default values of the dialog, uh, the software was able to, into, to uh, calculate uh, each strip and assign a strip uh, number. It is also possible to define sub blocks in an info project. And this is helpful that if you want to work on um, perhaps a large project, you um, want two people uh, working on the project, um, at the same time, uh, it could also be that maybe there's um, an area of the imagery uh, where there was maybe some sun uh, clouds or um, something that may uh, 
you, you may want to walk uh, work on these uh, on some of these areas individually. It is possible to um, define sub blocks, but with this project right here, it is uh, it's small enough that is that is not necessary. Once all of your project components are in, imported into uh, the info software, the project is now fully set up. And this is where I mentioned now that we start going into the individual modules of the info software. So uh, from within the georeferencing menu, uh, the typical next step is to move to the aerial triangulation process. And uh, in our case, this is match AT. And in a typical workflow, um, what you will do is you will measure ground control points, um, either uh, all of them or some of them. And actually, I'm going to switch to another previously prepared project, Match AT, and back into Match AT GCP measurement. So the GCP measurement will open up our project in a multi-photo environment. And this is the part that allows me to measure all or some of the control prior to kicking off the automatic tie point extraction. There are some semi-automatic and fully automatic ground control uh, measuring tools. And for example, if I were to have a look at this ground control that's on the corner of this panel, and if I were to clear um, its measurement, I have an option to strictly manually measure a ground control point, and that is wherever I measure on the photo, that's where it'll be. I have a semi-automatic measurement option as well as a fully automatic. And so if I choose the fully automatic option and then I zoom into an appropriate level to measure the point, when I measure the control on the corner of that panel, the software will then measure that same control point on all of the other photos. And then uh, the user will need to verify the, the results in all of the photos. Once all of the ground control is measured, uh, then it is time to start the automatic uh, tie point processing. And that is again performed in uh, another part of Match AT. For the tie point extraction and bundle, uh, bundle adjustment, uh, we select the option in the processing step. And then we have options that uh, we set for uh, what kind of point density do we want in the tie pointing? Uh, do I want a, a tie point distribution pattern of a traditional three by three, or do I want to go by a four by four or a five by five? And then I also specify parameters uh, for the bundle adjustment part. Um, do I want to consider the, the GNSS and the IMU? I also have the ability to calculate shift drift parameters as well as boresight misalignment angles. And there is a sort of a low-level uh, self-calibration uh, procedure that we could perform on the, the camera. And then once all of those parameters are selected, we select the run button and the automatic tie point processing will then start. When the processing has completed, you are presented with a log file that will show um, not only the statistics uh, regarding the project. So for example, um, if I dive into this log file, I can see just exactly how many observations were generated for each photo. Um, I am presented sigma naught values for not only the image points and the control points, but also the GPS and the IMU. Um, later in the log file, I also get individual residuals for the horizontal control points as well as the vertical control points. And so if I have accidentally mismeasured a ground control point or if I uh, simply chose the wrong location, um, I should be able to see in this log file um, a higher residual value, which may alert me that I may have a, a, a bad measurement uh, on a ground control point. And then um, the output of Match AT is uh, updated EO, uh, so refined EO uh, parameters. And as you can see here, this is on the, uh, the, the bottom of the log file. This is typically uh, one out of three reviews that are available in Match AT to review your AT results. 
There is a statistical review, which is typically reviewing this log file that was generated from the process. The second review that we have is a graphical review, and that can be done if we go back into the Match AT multi-photo uh, environment. And the graphical review allows us to do things such as um, enable what is called error ellipses on the automatically generated tie points. The error ellipse will tell us, um, uh, the color tells us how many photos that point is matched in and is the shape and the size of the ellipse will tell us the uh, residual. I can also uh, have this the same with the ground control points. Um, if I turn the tie points off here just for visibility, um, I can draw a vector with the ground control uh, where the vector represents the uh, magnitude of uh, residual in X and Y, and I can also enable in Z. So um, again, I can use this to tell, determine if I've got a ground control point with a high residual that might indicate that perhaps I maybe uh, measured it incorrectly. Um, I can also display links on the screen, and I will turn the image footprints off uh, just temporarily to get a little better visibility, and as well as the strip symbology off. And so this will allow me to determine what photo is linked with its neighbor. And it is used to make sure that there are no weak areas, there are no uh, holes in the, the, the AT. And then uh, there's also uh, another example is uh, what we call binning, which will show us a uh, density of the tie points. And I can control the size of these bends, and this will allow me to, again, look for possible weak areas within my project. Um, in the event I have a weak area, um, it is possible to add manual tie points. Um, to the project and then we repeat the bundle adjustment process for those tie points to take effect. And the third review that you would typically do uh, after the tie point generation would be a stereoscopic review. Uh, some people will call this a parallax check, but in Match AT, uh, you do have the option of viewing images in a stereo environment. Um, I have anaglyph mode right now set uh, on my laptop so that all you need is the uh, paper uh, anaglyph glasses uh, to view. However, it is also possible to do an active stereo if you have a um, 3D capable monitor and the stereo synced glasses in the emitter, uh, which is far better quality. Uh, but for AT purposes, I find that actually the anaglyph mode is uh, actually ideal for checking for parallax in a stereo model, uh, particularly in the urban built up areas. And so those are the three reviews that we have available, the statistical, the graphical, and the stereo review. And um, also the Match AT process will produce a PDF report, which is a sort of a combination of uh, both the statistical and the graphic review. And uh, this is starting to become more and more robust with a lot more information as the software progresses. And uh, you're presented with a combination of statistics and also a graphical analysis, uh, but just in a packaged in a sort of a convenient uh, report. This is very helpful to possibly send to a client if they um, want uh, information about how um, how the project was. Uh, they can see a polynomial distortion uh, graphic, which this will tell you if your camera is calibrated or not, as well as the image residuals uh, below. If your camera has calibration issues, uh, it will definitely show up in these charts. Uh, I'm sorry, in these uh, these graphics here. And just like the, the Match AT log file, this report also uh, contains some parameters regarding the ground control. And so here I can see uh, for each ground control point that I have in the project, not only can I see the individual uh, residuals, but I can also see the, the overall RMSE error. And so um, this PDF report is a, is a nice combination of uh, statistical and graphical review. And uh, also important to note with the Match AT software is uh, there is a, a module that is included uh, called InBlock and it is Info's uh, full camera calibration. And um, 
This used to be a separate license in previous releases, but it is now automatically included in your Match AT license. So if you are familiar with how to properly fly a project and prepare it for camera calibration uh, for no additional uh, charge, uh, you do have the in-block camera, camera, camera calibration uh, capability that is available in the Match AT software. Once your aerial triangulation is finished, Match AT, and then it is then time to then go into the surface generation, which is um, either the Match T for the classic DTM or classic DSM, or the Match 3DX, which is the um, point cloud generation using the semi-global matching technique. And in this project right here, um, I've actually created a classic DTM for the entire project. And then I also did a dense point cloud uh, just sort of in the central business, business district of this uh, little city uh, located just outside of Denver, Colorado. And to specify the, to, to create a new surface, you simply give it a name. Uh, this is my DTM. And you choose the type if you want a, uh, a uh, classic DTM or a point cloud as well as a two and a half D uh, SGM, um, you select parameters. The parameters are fairly basic. It asks you um, what kind of terrain type do you want to generate for? Um, do you want to do undulating? Do you want to do flat or mountainous? And with each um, with each parameter setting, um, you build a, uh, a job, so to speak. And you can also uh, specify how often do you want your um, your spacing, for example, in a classic DTM, do you want it every two meters? Do you want it every five meters? And then once you create the job, then you then activate the job and you click the execute button or the start button, and then the process will, will, um, will proceed from there. Uh, one thing to note, um, some of you may be hearing about Match 3DX for the first time. And um, the surface generation package that we've had in info for the longest time was called Match T. And Match 3DX is the added um, true ortho uh, direct from point cloud as well as the, uh, th the 3D mesh generation. And the Match T functionality is included in the Match 3DX software. So if you purchase Match 3DX, you get the benefit of having the semi-global matching technique available as well as the classic Match T functionality available. Once your surface is generated, uh, whatever uh, type that you wished, uh, then the workflow continues um, to typically DT master where the surface will be reviewed and any editing that needs to take place. And DT master is launched under the capture menu DT master. And it is also a multi-window stereo environment um, this is where um, your QAQC tools for the surface are located. I can uh, display contours. Um, I will turn the, I will activate the dense point cloud that I generated for the central business uh, district of Louisville. And then I will, and my laptop is just a little bit dragging this morning. It's a five-year-old laptop. The Match 3DX and Match T software will uh, automatically divide the surface file up into tiles. And uh, the reason why we do this is it makes it efficient uh, for not only displaying and editing, that I can just view and modify uh, just a tile of data on the computer rather than having to load every point um, into the, into the, onto the computer and into the display. Uh, some of these, point clouds can get into the billions of, um, in terms of number of points. So um, it's best to just sort of work um, in little small chunks. Um, I have loaded a tile here of my dense point cloud and I will go ahead and turn the background imagery off so we can just look at the point cloud. Uh, right now I'm looking at a simplified uh, uh, point cloud, but I also have the option to do a height colored. 
which will color the points uh, based on their elevation. And since this is a, a classic DSM point cloud, I also was able to do a colorization of the imagery. And um, the display will change um, depending on my zoom level. Uh, this is just a display uh, option that is, uh, that is definable in the preferences of the software. Um, but this is the dense point cloud. I have a full range of editing um, tools. Uh, the primary editing tool that I tend to use is a 3D profile. So I can define a box and just in that box, I can look um, at, the, uh, at the area in 3D and rotate the box. Um, I also in this box have all of the access to the, the colorization, the display. Um, back in the main view right here, I have a contour that I can display. Um, it is currently set for 10 centimeter here. That's probably a little dense. Let's go half meter here, or half meter contours. I have a, what is called an embossed um, relief map that'll allow me to um, sort of get a shaded relief. Um, that shaded relief is also available as a for colorized. And so using a combination of the contour lines, the shaded relief, and then uh, just uh, visually looking at it, um, I can identify areas uh, that may need some editing. Um, this is also the environment that I, if I want to supplement this point cloud with uh, break lines, I have a full set of editing, digitizing, and drawing tools. And uh, again, this can all go into the 3D uh, stereoscopic environment uh, for, for precision and uh, digitizing. Once the uh, surface file is generated and I'm satisfied with it, uh, the next step then is to go into the ortho master software. And the ortho master software, the workflow is fairly straightforward. It is, it is accessed by going to imaging ortho master. And the first step is to uh, usually I have my surface file and I want to import my surface file that is done under the data import and uh, under height models. And I can import either a, um, there's a variety of uh, formats that we can accept, but the most common is we take a, a DXF file, we take a last file, or if you're in the info environment, uh, we'll take the info DTM scope uh, format. Um, once the height model is imported, I get these uh, tick marks, these red, the blue, and the green tick marks, which represent the coverage of the, the DTM. The second step is to generate the ortho areas and um, this is going to be the actual output area of an image. Um, you can generate the ortho using the entire image footprint, but usually you want to go inside a little bit to uh, maybe uh, not pick up any of the vignetting that might be present in the, present in the uh, images, but also if you have some buildings, you, you probably want to use the pixels that are in the center of a photo rather than the outside so you can avoid the building lean. Um, the info, the I'm sorry, the ortho areas, once they're generated, they are shown in blue. Um, the software will automatically create these for you. However, it is uh, possible if you want to digitize these areas on your own, um, it is possible to, uh, for each photo, we have an editor, an ortho area editor that'll allow me to modify the ortho area. I can change the shape. If I hold down the control key, that'll allow me to add a, a vertice, or if I left mouse click on the vertice, it will delete it. Um, so it is possible to manually define these ortho areas. However, I find in most cases, it's best just to use the software to generate these areas. It is also possible in OrthoMaster to define an area of interest. And uh, oops, I accidentally went too far out. Let me go back in computer was lagging a little bit. I was moving a little faster than it wanted to. Um, this red box here is an area of interest and I have uh, two icons that will allow me to draw an area of interest, which is the output that represents the output. So I can either uh, digitize it as a rectangle. I also have a polygon um, way to define an AOI. 
though I don't know why you would do a stop sign uh, version. And it is also possible to um, have an AOI from uh, maybe a DXS file uh, project limit, and it is possible to um, import your AOI uh, just from uh, an, another format. Once you have imported your height model and the um, ortho areas are generated, um, you then go in and you specify the uh, pixel size. Uh, how do you want to handle uh, if there's no imagery, if there's no DTM, do you want it um, uh, black pixels? Uh, you can specify the format. Uh, do you want a TIFF, GeoTIFF? Uh, these are just kind of standard uh, ortho processing. And then once these um, are finished, processing the final step in the info process will be to go to ortho vista and this is the software where we do the final mosaicing the automatic seam line generation as well as the tone balancing and so if i go to my ortho master okay i have imported the ortho photos and um, I can also generate what is called output tiles or uh, some people call these map sheets where uh, these could be 500 feet by 500 feet uh, output tiles. Um, it is possible to define these in the software as well as you can create uh, one in another. Um, you can you can create it in a different uh, in a text editor for example with uh, coordinates of your uh, your map sheets. Um, you select some parameters uh, regarding where do you want the output to go. Um, there are some options regarding the global adjustment, uh, global tilting. Uh, we can also do single adjustments if we have um, images that might need some dodging. That's where the, the center is a little bright and the corners are dark, which was typical of the film cameras. It's possible to do some uh, dodging as well as a hot spot removal. That's the um, the bright spot that in the summertime you get on uh, where the sun reflects. There's also a water reflections removal for those projects that are in uh, areas of a lot of water. And then we also have some options for the uh, feature detection. Um, we primarily just use feature detection now and then uh, our options are simply do we have a rural area, a mixed area, or an urban area and that just determines the complexity of the seam line as well as how wide the blending is. And then uh, we process the orthos and the final result is um, output. In my example right here, it is map sheets. And then a typical workflow is we then go back to um, Applications Master and maybe even DT Master. And I have loaded up the orthos in my project now. So uh, I now have 66 orthos. Um, not all of my images are in here, but uh, as you can see, here are my output tiles here. And I can then go into DT Master and sort of do a systematic review of the ortho uh, to see if I have any, perhaps I might have some DTM errors. Uh, do I have any issues with the seam lines? And I will turn the orthos on. Let's see, these are my final orthos, so I will set these to an active status. And so here is my, my final ortho. Um, I can go through and do a systematic uh, check. If I find an issue with the DTM, um, I can bring in the DTM that was generated from MatchAT and perform an edit. Um, I can also bring in the seam lines that were generated uh, for from OrthoVista to determine if perhaps my error is due to a seam line, maybe crossing into a structure or a building, or maybe another reason. Um, and then the after this review is performed, if you uh, have some seam lines that you need uh, modification, there is a seam line editor in OrthoVista that will allow you to uh, change the shape and direction, uh, redigitize the seam lines. And OrthoVista will automatically detect if you change a tile, uh, for example, I change a, a seam line on tile 31, it will flag me that that tile has been edited so that I can then just reprocess that tile without the need of, of processing all of the, the tiles again. So those are the general highlights of the info software. Um, I'll touch just a little bit on the UAS master software. 
and uh, correct spelling always helps. Nine point, there we go, 10. And for those of you who work in uh, the info software, you will see a lot of similarities and you will be very comfortable in the UAS master software. Um, the layout is uh, very similar. However, we have some simplified dialogues. Um, uh, this is also available in info, I didn't show it, but in UAS Master, there is a 3D project viewer that will allow me to uh, rotate the project on its side. Um, I can verify the, the flight heights, um, as well as our classic 2D viewer of the footprints, uh, no point clouds. The UAS Master software is very similar, where step one is a project preparation. Uh, when you click on the edit button, it just takes you into the project editor that we saw before. And uh, the workflow is, um, is, is very similar, where you define a camera, you import the, the images, and as well as you import the uh, EO. Um, a lot of this information can be derived from the XF header of each image, so uh, we can actually create the camera and extract the EO while we import the images in one step. Uh, so there's actually a little bit more efficiency uh, for those systems that do utilize the geolocation information in the XF header of each image. And then your ground control points are imported. Uh, it is not necessary to generate strips in UAS master. And then once your project is prepared, uh, we go to the georeferencing step, which this would be the equivalent of the match AT software. And uh, same environment, same multi-photo environment. Uh, if I want to measure ground control points, uh, no problem. I can come in and use the automatic and semi-automatic tools. And I think I've got my image paths may not be correct on this project, which is why the images are not showing. The type point extraction process has been simplified into just really just two questions for the user. Uh, what level do you want to process? Do you want to process to the level zero, the level one, or the level two? And then uh, you are asked a question about the initial orientation. Do you have precise EO values or are you dealing with weak values? Um, and then once the type points are generated, um, if you choose to refine your GCP measurements or perhaps measure uh, other GCP measurements, uh, then you will need to run the bundle adjustment again, which is under the orientation menu. Uh, this is also allows us to do a camera calibration, which is critical in uh, UAV systems. And for those systems that have uh, the high-end GPS and the IMU, it is also possible to calculate the, uh, the antenna offsets as well as the uh, bore sight misalignment angles. There is a, re, a report file that is exactly what was generated in Match AT. That exact same PDF uh, file is generated for UAS Master. Um, you still can you can still do the same exact reviews, the statistical, the graphical, and the stereo reviews um, in UAS Master. So I will go ahead and and, and bypass uh, discussion on that since we've seen it again. And then once the georeferencing or the AT part is finished, uh, then we go into the surface and ortho generation. And this is handled uh, via um, sort of a point cloud database where all of our uh, points are written into a database. Uh, I already have generated a point cloud in this project, but if I were to generate a new surface, uh, my questions once again are, are simplified. Do I want to do a classic DTM? Uh, what extraction level, level zero, level one or two of the imagery? Um, here, the surface CBM is the classic point cloud, and then I have some options here for the uh, semi-global map uh, matching, which is the, the true ortho direct from point cloud. Once those points are generated, I then can select um, points to be loaded into an editor, and then uh, now I'm into sort of um, parts of where we saw with DT Master, where I have the full editor available to me. Um, all of the GIS kind of CAD tools, the surface editing, um, I can I can do contours, I can do the shaded relief, I can also view this in stereo. Uh, one benefit of UAS Master is that if I do find a problem in the ortho that is related to the DTM, I can make the edit um, simply defining a patch. Uh, so I can regenerate the ortho simply within that patch without having to um, regenerate the entire ortho, which, which could be time consuming. So as we can see in UAS Master, there's a lot of um, 
There's a lot of tools that are taken from the main info, but they're just in a simplified, um, uh, in, a, in, in a single place uh, for the entire workflow uh, specific to UAVs. And so uh, that is it for UAS Master. I won't go too far into it as we're starting to bump up against the time now. And um, now, if I go back to the slides, final slide. Um, you can contact me if you have any questions. I can uh, provide answers to you. Um, you can shoot me an email using the email address as un uh, imaging underbar support at trimble.com. Um, that is a, a monitored email box that myself and my colleagues uh, in the Stuttgart Germany office will monitor. So if you've uh, come up with specific questions or um, any anything that uh, need additional information, uh, feel free to give me uh, feel free to shoot us an email and we'll be able to, to, have, to handle it from there. Uh, that is the end of my presentation. Uh, with the little bit of time that we have left, if anybody has any questions that uh, we could perhaps answer live, uh, we could go ahead and just type it into the chat. And then uh, Livia, I believe you can monitor the chat and uh, if there's any questions, let's see if we can use a little time here to answer them. Sure, Mark, I have one question here for you. Can I use Match AT for UAS image aerial triangulation? Yes, you can. Um, it is possible. However, the tie point generation algorithms are a little bit different in Match AT than they are in the UAS master software for, for UAV. In Match AT, we are doing sort of traditional tie point matching uh, based on the Von Gruber points. Um, we assume that you have accurate GPS and accurate IMU, and um, with the strip creation, we, we know the precise orientation and location of the images. With UAV, we may not have all of that. Uh, we, we're happy if we get a one meter uh, GPS accuracy. We, almost always never have IMU with the lower end systems. And so the tie point of algorithms for UAS Master is more um, designed so that you can kind of put the photos in uh, almost like a pile. And the um, tie point process will actually sift through all of the imagery um, looking for common areas matching uh, where the match AT doesn't necessarily do that. So a bit of a long answer, but it is possible to take UAV into match AT. However, it is, it's not optimized and we are making assumptions based on the accuracy of the input data that typically is not met with UAV. All right, thank you. Uh, one more. Can you elaborate a little on the true orthophoto production process? Okay, um, just kind of a, Brief explanation, I mentioned that we have a classic orthophoto as well as a true orthophoto. And um, the primary difference between uh, true ortho and classic photo is that um, during, the, during the classic ortho rectification process, we are not checking for occluded areas. And what that means is that if you have a building, uh, so let's say you have a 10 story building or even taller, if you fly with a 60% uh, overlap and your typical 20 or 30% side lap, uh, they're not, there's not going to be a lot of stereo models that I'm going to be able to see behind that building. And so there's going to be an area in the mapping area that I'm not going to be able to uh, generate any data for because I just simply can't see it. Um, the result in the ortho is that uh, the objects lean away from the center of the uh, camera. You've probably seen this in um, overhead shots and movies where there's a low-flying aircraft uh, man, uh, uh, over Manhattan, and when the building is directly under the camera, there's no lean, but as soon as the camera moves away, that's where you get your building lean. Well, this is where true ortho comes in. True ortho does look for those occluded areas, and so it, it attempts to make sure that all areas in the mapping area and the mapping project um, are covered. Um, the effect for us is that it removes that building lean. So no matter where the um, image is, uh, wherever that, that building, for example, is in the stereo model, uh, that lean will be corrected for. 
it does require a much higher overlap flying. In fact, if you're going to do true ortho, um, it usually is about a 90 to 80 uh, percent uh, overlap and a, and a much increased uh, side lap. And it may also be necessary to digitize um, in a, in a in a true ortho. Uh, traditionally, we we may have to go and digitize some of the building features in there to get them properly modeled. So. That's kind of the top level explanation of the difference between a classic and a true ortho uh, photo. Okay. All right. I think that covers the questions. Let's see. Got one more here. Where do you generate a point cloud and where do you? Yeah, let's see. Okay, where do you generate a point cloud in info? Okay, in the info software, the point cloud generation is available either under the Match T or the Match 3DX module. Um, and while we generate it in that software, we sort of we sort of hold it in an internal database that allows us to work with it in the tiles for the efficient display and and uh, in editing, but when you reach a finished project uh, product, there is a, an export where then you can then export all of those points out to a uh, a standard LAS file. Okay, one more. Can I insert lidar data to improve point cloud accuracy and match 3DX? It is possible to import. A surface file. It is in the dialog. If I go off of memory, it's called Consider Initial Height Model. Um, however, the little I've played with it in the past, I have found that for most terrain types, it, there really is not an added benefit. Uh, we, we're not really adding any accuracy um, to especially terrain where it's flat, undulating, and even a little bit hilly. Uh, where I have found that it might be helpful to do that it would be in the extreme mountainous areas. Uh, think like Rocky Mountains or um, you know the, the, the Alps. Um, that it might be beneficial, but I find that uh, it's possible to do that, but it doesn't really um, have an added benefit to it. Okay, uh, one more here. Um, so in the occlusion areas, do we get areas with black pixels with the true ortho if there isn't sufficient overlap? Correct. If there's no data there, then uh, you get uh, what's called null pixels, which are the by default the take the color of black. Okay. For calibrating camera mounting on a UAV, would it be recommended to fly using two different altitudes? Uh, that would be recommended uh, more for the focal length. Um, so in a traditional calibration flight, um, you fly a series of strips and then you fly a series of cross strips at a, a, a higher altitude. Uh, that is uh, primarily to uh, get a more accurate focal length uh, in the camera camera position. So that is that is highly recommended, but it's for for focal length purposes. Okay. All right. I think that covers all the questions for now. And um, thank you very much, Mark. That was wonderful overview of info. And again, if anybody would like to review this webinar or others, please go to the industrial.phase1.com page and scroll to the bottom to access the library. Also, don't forget to register for the phase one newsletter to hear about any upcoming products. And that concludes today. Again, thank you very much, Mark. And I hope everybody has a good rest of their day. You're welcome. And everybody stay safe out there.